Let's say you have a patient with newly diagnosed breast cancer. One of the first clues to developing a therapeutic strategy is to find out what kind of receptors are present as they may present as a target for certain medications. In this lecture, we will be learning what are the main drugs in the selective estrogen receptor modifier class, understand the mechanism of action, indicate the clinical uses, and explain what kind of side effect profile we should be anticipating. Selective estrogen receptor modulators, also known as CIRMs, are drugs that have different effects on estrogen receptors depending on where they are located. Basically, they can be agonist or antagonist depending on where they bind. Here's a little general farm review. What type of drug is not able to be overcome by increasing the amount of partial agonists? That's right, it's a non-competitive antagonist. Clomiphene works by inhibiting estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus. It does this with a combination of both competitive and non-competitive means. Normally, estrogen binds with the estrogen receptors on the hypothalamus and negatively inhibits GnRH release, which reduces FSH and LH secretion from the anterior pituitary. So, clomiphene works by inhibiting the estrogen receptors and prevents this negative feedback, thereby increasing LH and FSH. This stimulates ovulation, making clomiphene a good first-line treatment for which condition? That's right, for infertility. Testable side effects include hot flashes, ovarian enlargement, multiple simultaneous pregnancies, and vision problems. The reason behind the multiple gestation is that clomiphene causes an uncontrolled ovulation where both ovaries might release multiple eggs each, unaware of what's happening on the other side. Another serum that is highly board testable is tamoxifen. It competitively binds to the estrogen receptors as an antagonist in breast tissue, as well as a partial agonist in uterine and bone tissue. It is used to treat and prevent recurrent estrogen receptor or progesterone receptor positive breast cancer in pre- and post-menopausal women. On the other hand, it is a partial agonist on the endometrium. And it is linked to what cancer? Well, that would be endometrial cancer. So it is kind of a double-edged sword and must be used with caution. Also, patients who smoke are at a higher risk of experiencing thromboembolic events. And since we already know that tamoxifen works as a receptor agonist in bone, try to recall from the musculoskeletal chapter what you learned about the effects of estrogen on the bone. That's right, it helps prevent bone loss. Reloxifen is a serum that is also an antagonist at the breast, also has increased risk of thromboembolic events in smokers, but what makes it unique is that it has estrogen agonist properties on bone without the effects on the endometrium. It reduces resorption, making it an effective treatment for osteoporosis, like tamoxifen. It is an antagonist on breast tissue. So it also is used for invasive breast cancer, but only in postmenopausal women. Unlike tamoxifen, raloxifen is an antagonist on the endometrial tissue and therefore does not promote endometrial cancer. The bottom line is that whilst tamoxifen and raloxifen are both agonists at the bone, only tamoxifen is a partial agonist at the endometrium. So only tamoxifen is associated with increased risk of endometrial cancer. That is, raloxifen is not associated with endometrial cancer. So you can relax with raloxifen. On the other hand, tamoxifen would be safe to use in patients with a history of a hysterectomy, since they no longer have an endometrium. Flash quiz! 
What is the primary use of the serum tamoxifen? And the answer is to treat estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. Do make sure you know its side effects though, especially the fact that it can ironically cause endometrial cancer as well. All right, let's go over a test yourself question. We have a 37-year-old female who comes to the office with her husband with a two-year history of difficulty conceiving. They have considered several options and would like to attempt pharmacological therapy. The doctor suggests a medicine that works by inhibiting the negative feedback at the hypothalamus to stimulate ovulation. The physician should inform the patient on which possible adverse reactions. The answer is D, hot flashes. The excessive LH and FSH can lead to adverse reactions such as hot flashes, ovarian enlargement, multiple simultaneous pregnancies, and visual disturbances. So wrapping up the CIRMS lecture, we learned that there are three main drugs in this class, clomiphene, tamoxifen, and raloxifene. Each has its own unique binding capability. Clomiphene is used mainly for infertility treatment, tamoxifen for estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, and raloxifene for osteoporosis. They all increase the risk of hot flashes and venothrombotic events, but each has its own unique risk profile. Thanks for watching, and be sure to click thumbs up if you enjoyed this video.